When you were a little girl, did you want to dress up? All the time, yeah. I used to love wearing men's clothes, um, my mum's clothes, oversized stuff. But because I was so short, I used to look really stupid and a bit like a clown, you know. What young kids like doing, dressing up, putting makeup on, whatever, yeah. What, uh, what is your earliest recollection of you being fascinated by the way a rock star looked? Well, to be honest with you, I was really never fascinated by rock stars and the way they dress, because I used to think they looked stupid a lot of the time. Um, I think when I was younger, it used to be people like <clears throat> Gary Glitter, and uh, I think the Sex Pistols were around that time as well. And basically, I used to think, well, they look a bit, you know, a bit too trendy for me and a bit too overdressed. I used to especially hate watching Top of the Pops and seeing these pop stars looking into the camera and you know, going like that, singing, and it used to really put me off because I thought they was, you know, thought they were really important or something. Um, I used to just like people who used to look casual and just get on with their, their act or whatever it was. I never really looked up to rock stars and their dress and stuff. I used to just get on with my own sort of style, as it were. Now, at one point, you were, you were in, a, in a band yeah. called Bow Wow Wow. <clears throat> yeah, heard and that name before somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And how did that come about? Um, well, basically, I used to work in a, in a London dry cleaners, and uh, it wasn't, you know, where you just go in and wash your clothes and people sort of do their washing, but it's a place where people actually take sort of special suede jackets and silk shirts and stuff like that and get their clothes cleaned and uh, have them all nice and pressed. And I used to hang bags and tickets on clothes. And so one day, a friend of Malcolm McLaren's came in, um, and he came in just to buy some illegal stuff from a Jamaican fellow who used to drink lots of beer and sing and dance and uh, get high on steam, you know. Um, to cut a long story short, yeah, he asked if I was interested in singing. And uh, I said, yeah, I, I used to sing to records and tape off the radio. I mean, I was about, I think, 13, 14 then. And uh, asked if I'd like to go to an audition with a band. Of course, I thought he was joking. So um, anyway, I took a friend along with me just to be on the safe side because he didn't look, you know, very normal. He looked a bit sort of weird. He had a bit of a Liverpudlian accent too. Um, and I, I went along for the audition and it was, it was with Bow Wow. Well, they weren't known as Bow Wow, but they were known as the ex ants at the time. And, yeah. I'm sorry. That's all I said. No. And up until that time, did you, ha did you have any interest or any sort of desire to be in a rock group? Uh, not at the time, no. I didn't really think about it because... I mean, at that age, you don't, obviously. I mean, I was more interested in having a good time with my friends, going out to parties and getting interested in other things. But, um, you know, school, whatever, having a laugh, really. But um, when I actually met the band, they really wanted me to be their singer. So I gave up school and uh, left home and did all the things that I shouldn't have done, I suppose. And, uh, I mean, you know, music was more important to me, I suppose, than anything else. So I just went for what I felt more for, and I really enjoyed it, you know. Now, what was your, what was your look in Bow Wow? I don't know, you tell me. What do you think my look was in Bow Wow? I can't really say. I can't really say. I mean, obviously, there was Vivian Westwood. She designed a lot of the stuff, and uh, people say it was piratical and romanticism and all this rubbish, you know, but basically, it was just meant to be fun because uh, a lot of people at that time were wearing leather gear and trying to look really trendy with you know, nice, nice sort of quiffs and stuff. And at the time, you know, to us, it seems a bit boring. And Vivian was a, is a very, very innovative designer. And she, she had clothes that were a bit mad, which is what I liked about them, because, you know, like you have tubes hanging from T-shirts and um, lots of stuff like that. And they were colourful. And they seemed to go with a sort of music, which was very tribal. And uh, they were very tropical, you know, colourful sort of clothes. And they made you feel a bit freer, which is the reason why we wore them. And that's the sort of look we went for at the time. Now, how, how much input did you have into the look? How much of it was you? How much of it was designed by someone else for you? Uh, well, none of it, actually, because, as I said, Vivian Westwood designed all the clothing with Malcolm's help. And um, we just wore the stuff because we felt it went with the sort of music and the sort of feel of the music at the time. Um, and no one else was doing that sort of thing, you know. Um, and I mean, I remember wearing gold suits, and even though I was like five foot odd, 14 years of age, walking around with 
stereo headphone set and going on the tube with people laughing at me and stuff. I mean, it was okay because, you know, they didn't have to do it then. It was all, like, new to them. But now, you know, after about three, four years, everyone's sort of doing it and they think it's safe to go out and dress up like that, which is okay. But it's, uh, it's the people who actually have the, the guts to go out and wear that sort of thing on the street who aren't really interested in just looking trendy but actually trying to get an individual look that I admire most, really. Were you, um, how much... How, how closely related was your stage look to your personal off-stage look? Well, we used to wear the clothes the whole time um, because it was comfortable. And, uh, you know, as I said before, because it felt right. Um, I mean, the clothes were very light, as well as looking, looking good on stage. They were very light. So, I mean, I could move around on stage if I wanted to. I didn't sort of get tied up in leather jeans looking, feeling really hot and uncomfortable, trying to look cool, but, you know, at the same time feeling really uncomfortable. So it was OK to wear the stuff on stage and move about. They were versatile. Unfortunately, the, um, the actual clothes weren't sort of made by sort of Italian designers or whatever, so Vivian's just sort of thrown together and you just had to wear them. They sort of fell, fell apart in a sort of couple of weeks or so. You know, I mean, after touring, we used to wear them constantly, so I used to find out all sorts of things like that, stitches falling apart and things like that, you know. But it was OK, we were comfortable, which is the most important thing. Did you, uh, did you at the time consider yourself to be a fashion innovator? No, not at all. Um, I mean, the whole thing with um, Vivian's clothes were, the fact, as I said, you know, with our particular group, it was, it was the music, it felt right, it was... It was very comfortable, loose, and it was colourful, and that's what we wanted. I mean, there were sort of tribal sounds. It just felt right, sort of slightly Indian, and I suppose people said slightly piratical, which is what we were, sort of young buccaneers or, you know, looking for an adventure. And that's what the whole thing was. But the whole unfortunate thing was about the clothing was they were too expensive for young kids to buy off the street. I mean, you know, we were sort of wearing them and saying, yeah, these clothes are great. And then there were these kids of 14, 15, you know, my age, going out and saying, we'd like some, but they're too expensive. You know, what can we do? And, of course, Vivian's moved up the bracket. She's sort of gone out and expanded into Rome and Italy. So it's a bit unfortunate they were too expensive. I think they should have been a lot cheaper, really. Yeah. Have you kept any of the clothes? Yeah, I've got loads of stuff still, yeah. I mean, I still like these square-toed boots. I used to, they used to make square-toed boots and, uh, with a little heel on it and, like, bells hanging off them. I took the bells off, of course, because it's too noisy. And, um, I mean, I found them okay. They were comfy, you know. Now, um, what, what in, in the stage that, that you've evolved in now and, and in the stage of careers, what's your look now? What sort of, what sort of image are you going for, or is there an image? Um, <clears throat> no, I, I mean, really, I don't really have a, a, a look as such because now with my forthcoming album and, and single, I'm more interested in the, the music aspect. I mean, obviously, uh, in the music business, everyone has got a certain look, but no more than anybody who's, like, working in a laundrette like I used to be or in a cake shop or what have you. I mean, they've all got certain styles and people have their own individual looks. But, um, I mean, I think nowadays I'm not so, you know, so wrapped up in trying to, trying to look colourful and, you know, be noticed, I suppose. I mean, I'm a little bit older, maybe, I don't know. But uh, I'm more interested in the music aspect of it now and trying to get the right sort of songs and material for myself and trying to get across and get some credibility across. When you, uh, when you go out on tour to support this new album, do you have any idea what you'll be wearing? Have you thought about it at all? Um, I don't know. I, I haven't really seriously thought about it. I mean, really, I, I don't ever think about looks. You know, I mean, I'm more interested, as I say, in music. When I get out on tour, I mean, I hope to put a decent show together. And... Um, wear whatever I feel comfortable wearing. And the most important thing, I think, is if you're going to wear clothes, is to, is to feel comfortable. I mean, if you look good and if you feel comfortable, that's, a, that's great, you know. I mean, I, I really don't agree with people who just wear, wear clothes just to look trendy and, uh, you know, be noticed. I suppose, you know, young kids like doing that, which is great because it's, it's a way for them to show their imagination and be expressive. But ultimately, I think it's important to feel comfortable in what you're wearing. Do you think that um, so in the past four years, in, in the with the development of the music television industry, yeah. um, how do you think that that's changed music? 
Well, I think that um, obviously television helps a lot with the music scene. Um, but I think videos have definitely taken over these in, in this day and age. I mean, a band don't have to go out and tour half as much as they did in the olden days, which must have been before my time, I suppose. Um, I mean, now you just show a video of a group, and for some, for some unknown reason, they just get in the public eye, obviously, and they want all the pops, and they're the biggest thing going. But um, I think it's important to, that a band should tour. And I think, you know, it gets too easy if a band are just projected through the media without having to tour and having to work for it. Because after all, it, you know, it's... I mean, apart from it being fun, making music and, you know, um, getting on TV and all the rest of it, it's also, it's also good to work for it. I mean, otherwise, if you get things too easy, you don't appreciate it as much, I think, anyway. I mean, when I was in my previous band, we toured and toured and toured. And that way, we actually appreciated the fact that we were actually you know, um, artists and musicians going out touring to entertain people. That's what it's all about. It's not about just posing around, trying to look good all the time, um, <clears throat> playing the big pop star, when really you haven't got any talent at all. I mean, it's very important, I think, to tour, to prove yourself. I mean, I don't know what... That's my opinion, anyway. I think uh, the public, obviously, are what count. And you want to... to find, I mean, I always find it's nicer if you get some feedback from the general public rather than just uh, having a nice flash video that costs three million odd pounds to make and hopefully, you know, um, break through that way. I mean, I, I really feel it's important to turn. I think the television side of it has taken over a little bit too much. Do you think that because, because of, of, of music television being so important, do you think that it's harder for, for, for people who are breaking into the business today? I mean, because you, you were so exposed so quickly. Yeah, it definitely um, <clears throat> gives people a preconceived idea about a group because, as I say, you know, they don't, they think just because they're on Trouble Pop, say, an English programme or uh, MTV, if you like, with a video and then they're, they're the next biggest thing since sliced bread and they go out and, you know, they do all these promos without actually playing any live dates or sort of singing to backing tapes or whatever. I think they don't actually appreciate it and they all of a sudden are thrust into the public eye and, you know, they, they, they aren't really alive, they aren't really a group or, or act or whatever, you, you know, you'd like to put them into. I really think it's important that they should go out first, you know, make a name for themselves or, you know, make records and get them played instead of having just to, as I say, do a, a video that costs a lot of money. I think it's important for them to be seen and for people to see them who actually buy their records, yeah. Um, who... Is there anybody? Is there anybody out there today in the rock world um, that you think is doing anything interesting, innovative, and/or creative when it comes to fashion and style? Yeah, I think um, I think Prince was pretty good when he started off. You know, um, he had that sort of piratical look too, <clears throat> and now he's gone sort of more the uh, the midriff look, which is okay, right? I mean, I think he's good because he. He's a performer, and I mean, basically, I, I like. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sort of a old timer. I, I like stuff like the James Brown, Ruth Franklin. I'm, I'm into that era, the '60s, and I've always liked that sort of stuff. And I think that um, that sort of stuff inspires me today, even to what I'm doing, because the stuff that's around these days, it's okay, but it's nothing new. And yet, everyone's looking for an original, original formula, and yet there's, there's nothing new around. You know, so I think everyone's sort of trying to be too original, and yet they're coming out with nothing new. I hope it doesn't sound confusing. But um, I think, I mean, I'm, as I say, I'm more old-fashioned. I go for the old-timers, really. Stevie Wonder, James Brown, Aretha Franklin, all those sort of people. I have to agree with <laughs> One of the major, major um, things that we're, we're highlighting in this show on style and fashion and music yeah. is hair. Oh, and right. certainly when you were in Bow Wow Wow. You had I had hair. I didn't have any hair, actually. <laughs> but didn't have much, anyway. Hair. How yeah. How did that come about? Um, <clears throat> well, basically, the uh, I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm going to give credit to the lead guitarist in the band that I used to be in, because it was his idea, really. It was a bloke called Matthew Ashman. He was the lead guitarist in Bow Wow. He had a Mohican to start with. He got drunk one night and did it. So uh, it was through him, really, I got my Mohican, because he said to me, you know, why don't you get it done, and I... At first, I wasn't sure, because I used to be the sort of person, I was a bit shy, believe it or not, when I was in Bow Wow. I was, you know, I was used to having my hair all over my face. 
So he suggested I get it done, and it, it was amazing, because when I had the Mohican done, it was on, a, on a, an English tour, on a tour bus, one of the dancers in our group did it for me quickly, and had to shave the sides off. And I first went on stage with a paper bag over my head, because people, you know, obviously get more of a surprise that way. And it was quite a funny reaction I got, because people sort of stood there going, like that, and I thought, wow, you know. Because, I mean, they took more notice, which I liked, you know, because, I mean, the songs we were singing were sort of, everyone thought, oh, Malcolm McLaren wrote the lyrics, oh, Malcolm McLaren this, Malcolm McLaren that. So it was good, because we were beginning to prove ourselves, I think. Um, and it was, it was great. I mean, I, I really got into having my... It was so easy to take care of. I mean, all I used to do was just shave with a Gillette 2 razor. I mean, I even wanted to do an advert, but unfortunately, I didn't like women doing it, so... Oh, well. Um, but it was a great hairstyle to have. It was cool. It was comfortable, and it didn't take much, you know, taken care of. So I mean, that that's how that came about. That hairstyle. When you were when you were in Bow Wow Wow and you were, and you were performing, yeah. How long was it into your touring that you suddenly, or when did you suddenly look out and, and notice that people were starting to dress like you? Did that happen? Yeah, it did happen. It happened quite quickly, actually. I think again, it's because of Malcolm and because of the fact that um, with Sex Pistols, he had shop and they all wore clothes from the sex shop or seditionaries um so i think really they you know they thought ah oh, sex pistols too you know fashion whatever because obviously music has got a lot to do with fashion and um a lot of people started wearing it straight off but that was like when i say straight off that was after sort of like a, about six seven months that we were around and actually touring um the old punk rockers i think wanted something new to look to but I don't know. I mean, the, the people who were sort of new to it didn't, didn't dress up until about, I think, two, two years later, maybe, until we'd actually sort of been known. And it was like the new trendy thing to wear, I suppose. Um, but I think roughly about two years. When can we expect a new album? Um, well, hope <clears throat> my album's due out in America in April. And um, it's very different from Bow Wow. So anybody who expects it to be like it's going to be very disappointed. I'm just hoping that people are going to have an open mind, really. Um, I've got a single coming out too, um, and that should be out in a month or two's time, which hopefully will be played in the clubs. But basically, it's, it's, it's totally different, so everyone's going to be really disappointed and you know, think, oh, to hell with her. Um, but that my album's out, if anyone's interested, yeah, about April. Well, people won't be disappointed. Look at all the changes a lot of other people have gone through. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Will we see you in America soon? Oh, I hope so. I'd love to do a tour, but only, obviously, if people are interested. I mean, there's no point me going out and touring and playing to sort of two people standing there going like that. So it's going to be sort of if the album's doing OK and people really want to see me. It's up to the general public, really, so I'll leave it up to them. Well, I hope we see you, and thank you for taking Pleasure. Thanks. <laughs> thank you.